Today's Pittsburgh Steelers Talk episode is presented by Aura, an all-in-one digital safety tool built to help protect your identity and information online. We'll go more in-depth about what they offer, but they are giving you a free 14-day trial when you head over to Aura.com slash chat sports. Today's video, as promised, as hyped here, a Steelers trade ideas mailbag. You guys submitted the ideas. And I'm going to break them down. First up from Austin Butler. What about trading for Jeffrey Akuda? Had a lot of buzz coming out of college. Has had a real hard time staying on the field. Hasn't done much when he's been out there. Maybe give the Lions a third or a second. So you're right there, Austin. Highly tied a prospect out of Ohio State. A lot of injuries and bad play when he's been healthy. He is one of those awkward p players for me of very hyped coming out of college. But if a team is already moving on from their number three overall pick after two years, that should actually raise massive red flags in your own organization of, is he just going to be a bust? And that might make you not want to trade for him if he were available. And if you're the Lions, you're not sold on, then you probably want more than just a third round pick. Maybe second's the sweet spot there. It's a good name to consider. I just think in the end, the Lions are going to hold on and give him one more year at least to prove he can stay healthy and be the guy pretty much everyone thought he could be coming out of Ohio State. Now, if you want a future Trade Ideas mailbag, again, maybe you didn't get your question in, maybe we didn't pick yours, now is the time to get your Trade Ideas in the comments section. From Aiden Franks, a full-fledged trade package here. The Steelers get Deron Payne. The Commanders, meanwhile, get Tyson Alulu, Benny Snell, Mason Rudolph, and a second-round pick. Now, what this really boils down to is a second-round pick for Payne, which I think actually is a pretty good offer for a player who the commanders, eh, we'll see what they do with a long-term deal for Payne. I know he wants to get paid. There's been some uh, issues at points, it appears, between Payne and Allen, allegedly. Uh, issues with the organization. Big-time year. Payne has been a fantastic run stopper. If you add Payne to a defensive line consisting of Cam Hayward, potentially Stephon Tuitt to Marvin Leal, Payne is now your nose guard. That is an awesome front. Maybe one of the best, if not the best, in the entire NFL. Look, Mason Rudolph, Benny Snell, Tyson Alulu have no real trade value. Maybe Alulu has a little bit since he would replace Payne as the nose guard for the Commanders. But the second round pick, I think, actually is about the right value for a player of his age, impact, and level of contract time left. So do you think the Steelers will make a trade before the season? Even just a singular one. Will they trade away a player, trade for a player? Make your predictions in the comments. Y for yes or N for no. Here's Zach Ward's trade idea. Andre Dillard to the Steelers to take over at left tackle for Chase Claypool and a fifth round pick. Now, had we done this trade idea before the Eagles acquired A.J. Brown, I would have thought it made a lot of sense. In fact, honestly, Philly might win that trade. I know not all of you are sold on Claypool, but I think he's still a good football player and I think that's actually a better player that the Eagles are getting back. With the addition of A.J. Brown, not sure it makes the most sense, but I do think Dillard is a good potential target for Pittsburgh, depending on the cost. Someone I believe we've talked about in the past here on this channel. So he'd be a starter at left tackle, good pass protector. The run grade isn't elite, has not lived up to the expectations of being a first round pick, but I've seen tackle play around the NFL. It's always worse than what you think it is. I'd be fine bringing him in if I were Pittsburgh. Mark Collins says, I say trade for Jesse Bates. I love the idea. I do think Bates is obtainable. He's coming off his worst year, which also featured two interceptions in their postseason run. He has 10 interceptions in four years. He is a premier free safety. The one issue you run into, would the Bengals trade him to a division rival? I don't think so. I also don't think Pittsburgh wants to pay Jesse Bates number one, number two, number three safety money, and then immediately give it to Minka Fitzpatrick just as much, if not more. That's probably too much of an investment at the position. It's a fun idea. I just think there are some practical issues with the money and the Bengals even saying yes to it. 
Today's show, as we mentioned, is presented and protected by Aura as well. They have financial fraud protection, identity theft protection, online and device security for yourself or up to five family members. And they are hooking you guys up with a free 14-day trial at Aura.com slash chat sports. That link will be in the comment section and in the description. Aura helps keep your identity safe with extensive monitoring of your personal information and helping prevent it from ending up on the dark web. Identity theft is not a joke. You can just ask Jim Helpert or you, Jack. It's not a joke, okay? With a free trial, you can cancel at any time. There's no reason not to try Aura today. Simply head over to Aura.com slash chat sports and get going today. That link, again, will be high up in the comment section and the description as well. It's a free trial. Why not help protect yourself and your information? Next up from Jay Bastille. I'm not sure how to pronounce that last name, so I got it wrong. I'm terribly sorry there. Not sure if this was serious or not, by the way, but it was trade with the Eagles for Fletcher Cox, pick up free agent Eric Fisher, trade for Saquon Barkley, trade Minka for a first-round pick. The, the laughing, crying emoji makes me wonder if it's serious or not. Uh, in order, well, we're skipping Eric Fisher. Free agency doesn't count. Fletcher Cox, uh, no. The Eagles just re-signed him. Not going to happen. Sa for Trade for Saquon Barkley, you have a better running back than Najee Harris. I say no. Trade Mika for a first? Also no, because he's awesome at football. Now, I want you guys to let me know a realistic player that you guys want to trade for. Well, I think there was one that said trade the entire offense for a top five QB. I wish. That's not realistic, though. So let me know a realistic player you have in mind as a Steelers trade target. From Christian Cahill, we're like Pokemon. Got to catch them all. If Tua doesn't show, trade a third for J.J. Watt. Their value's maybe about right. Issue here is from Arizona's side, and maybe they'd want more, but J.J. Watt's pretty old, so I'm not sure the value's actually that far off. The Cardinals are contenders. They want to win football games right now. They are trying to win with a cheap, at least for maybe another few months or so, franchise QB in theory with Kyler Murray. The issue is... They need J.J. Watt to do that. They're actually pretty thin overall, pass rusher. So I think the Cardinals say no. Now, maybe if we get to the trade deadline and Arizona's a disaster, maybe then J.J. Watt could be a trade target. We will do more trade videos closer to the NFL trade deadline because we here at Steelers Talk are 3 65 channel. We got videos pretty much every single day. Every now and then there's an off day and no one does a video, but you get about 365 videos uh, over the year when you subscribe, minus the quarter video. YouTube.com slash Steelers TV is the link. If you haven't already, hit that big red button and subscribe. Next up from Dominic Schrade. Steelers get a first round pick in exchange for Deontay Johnson. Someone else also mentioned a second round pick. I do believe that Johnson's career arc is trending upward. And the numbers bear that out in terms of the, the yards, the catches, and, and the touchdowns have all gone up each and every single year. I know that A.J. Brown went for a first round pick. I don't think you'd be able to find a first rounder for Johnson. Second rounder, I think absolutely. But I don't know if a team is going to pay Deontay Johnson upwards of, let's say, around $20 million and give up a first-round pick. I think that's just a little bit too much to give up. Now, when it comes to Johnson, his future is a little bit up in the air. So what would you do with him? Would you trade him? If so, type in T. Would you pay him a big-time contract right now? If so, type in P. Or would you wait and be patient and just see how he plays this year before making a, a decision? That's type W for wait. Speaking of Ws, Wyatt Weaver. Uh, I know no one thinks of this one, but I would try to get one of the Seahawks cornerback twos or threes for a fifth or sixth round pick just to add depth because they're in a rebuilding stage and trying to get a whole bunch of young guys. Uh, whether or not you meant to include Seattle in particular because of the, the Witherspoon trade, I'm not sure, but that worked out wonderfully for Pittsburgh. Now, the young guys they're going to keep are Trey Brown, Kobe Bryant, and Tariq Wollin. They're not going to move those guys because they're young, they're in year one or in year two. That pretty much leaves Sidney Jones and Steelers legend Artie Burns. Uh, I don't know if any of those guys are actually appealing. I don't think Artie Burns is at this point. 
Maybe Sidney Jones is. I, I think pos I think the reason why the Akella Witherspoon trade worked out so well is because the Seahawks were stupid. They should not have moved on from from him. And the Seahawks and the Steelers won that trade in a massive way. I, I, I like the thought process of targeting teams that are rebuilding. I just don't think the Seahawks have the assets to make it worthwhile at that particular position. Our last three trade ideas are maybe troll ones. I'm not sure. We won't spend too much time on them, but there were a couple that I wanted to discuss here. First up from X-Dog, Rudolph in a second round pick for Justin Jefferson. Uh, Madden says no to that one. I would love to acquire Justin Jefferson. He is one of, if not the best, young receiver in the NFL, along with Jamar Chase. Mason Rudolph has no trade value. Uh, you have to move multiple firsts to get Justin Jefferson if that's the route you want to pursue. You're talking, I think, Deontay Johnson, a first, a second, and probably more, to be honest. His value would be higher than Tyreek Hill and Devontae Adams. Now, coming off that, Mason Rudolph won Nick. Mason Rudolph for a new washing machine. Now, this one I find uh, a little bit funny and maybe a, a little bit mean uh, just because it's, you know, it's pretty funny on that standpoint there. Uh, I think it was, was it J uh, first off, Kyle Korver technically, I believe, was traded for a um, a copy machine. And I believe Ed Monix uh, in, uh, was traded for a, a washing machine in Semi-Pro? Um, I might be mispronouncing that last name, by the way, but I'm pretty sure he got dealt for a washing machine, too, which was pretty funny. All right, from Scott Betzinger, Devin Bush, Edmonds for Fred Warner, and a second-round pick. This one I'm pretty sure is trolling because you're getting the two best assets for a worse linebacker and a mediocre safety or a low-end starting safety, whatever phrase you want to use there. So, by the way, if these were not troll ideas, I am sorry for being mean. I, well, I wasn't that mean on the Justin Jefferson one because I kind of thought it was maybe somewhat serious, but I'm pretty sure that last one was, was a troll.